mentioned the laurels have existed basically since the beginning of civilization itself. And I'm going to make a few today. If you're new to my channel, or if you're more familiar with the treadle style of spinning wheel, let's just take a brief moment and talk about what a spindle whorl is. The difference between a floof of wool and yarn is twist. It has to have twist to stay together because without twist, it falls apart. At some point, way, way, way back in human history, someone figured out that it was easier to add twist to fibers if you had a stick to use as a tool. And they probably discovered not long after that that a stick with some sort of weight on it uh, gets a lot more spin time than a stick all by itself. That one's still going. <laughs> Look at it go! I, I didn't give it any more twist, it's still going. I forgot how long this one's been, basically forever. It's still going. We're almost at the end now, it's slowing down. <laughs> so a weight on a stick is really useful for adding twist. And Done. Done. Now it's done. The spindle whorls have been discovered all over the world and they've been made of so many different uh, materials to create a spindle whorl. You can imagine that people are going to use whatever they have available to them to make a spindle whorl and that includes wood, bone, antler, glass, different kinds of pottery or ceramic, stone, metals, and of course, once we get to modern materials, we have acrylic like this one, which is made from acrylic. And you'll also see 3D printed spindle whorls, those vintage AOL CD spindle whorls. Sometimes people will even demonstrate spinning by taking a pencil and sticking it in an apple or a potato. It, it works, <laughs> it works. Um, and today I am going to use some polymer clay to create some spindle whorls. I've made polymer clay whorls in the past. And as you saw, this one works great. It spins for a very, very long time, but it's very heavy and it needs to be spun in a supported style. And I've been having a lot of fun lately spinning with hand distaffs and belted distaffs. And so I'd like to make a few more whorls that are a better style for using a spindle in, in the hand or clasped for clasp spinning with a um, distaff. I'm really fascinated by European medieval spinning and Scandinavian spinning um, and I have a few distaffs that are recreated in the style of that time period and I'd really like to include more spindle whorls in that in that style for that time period so that I can use them for my spinning experiments. I did a search online to look for some different whorls of that time period that could give me an idea of what kind of size, shape, um, different kinds of construction and materials, what they may have looked like, how they may have been used, and some of it's guesswork, but um, I was able to get some different shapes that we know for sure were the size and shape that spindle whorls were used, and so I'm going to use some of those as an idea, sort of a launch point, to make this a historically approximate uh, little experiment. I also have some spindle sticks that uh, kind of are approximately in the size and shape of some that have been discovered, although whorls are much more commonly discovered than sticks because wood rots easily. Um, but I have a few of those as well, so that's also going to be a little bit of a guide to make sure that my whorls are able to work with the spindle sticks that I have. I have some spindle whorls here. Um, they are reproductions of whorls that were found in uh, British Isles, Scandinavia, and these are made of 
uh, lead-free pewter. The original ones were lead, and I also have one made of glass. So I'm using a different material, but I have been spinning with these, so this is giving me a better idea of what to kind of approximately shape my whorls like so that I get the kind of spin that I'm going for with these techniques. The clay that I'm using today is called Craft Smart Polymer Clay. I got these colors to be very just sort of earthy, neutral kinds of colors. So I'm gonna put on an apron and we're gonna break these open, weigh them, and then I'll take each one and form it into a spindle whirl. We'll bake it and see how they spin. My reason for weighing the clay was to make sure I was staying under about 30, 25 grams or so. Uh, anything heavier than that to me feels more like it needs to be a full supported spindle and doesn't really work well with a handheld distaff. I used a bamboo skewer and a toothpick to cut the holes in the spindle whorls. The polymer clay can leave a greasy residue on raw wood and I did not want to mess up my actual spindle sticks. So if you do this experiment yourself, make sure you protect the wood if that's how you're cutting your holes. Everything has been baked and it is cooled and now it's time to test it out. So I have a handheld distaff here that's sort of similar to the Osberg distaff and I have a ribbon tied on it. So I'm just going to fluff up some of this Shetland wool that I have and get it ready to spin from this handheld distaff. And then I'm going to just spin a little bit with each of these. Hopefully they all fit somewhere on one of my spindle sticks and we'll see how they spin. You know, actually this roving, <laughs> it's, it's two together and I'm thinking I wanna separate these colors. So I'm gonna get some different wool. Um, I'm not sure this is gonna work real well on the distaff because it's not, it's, it's so much like a, yeah, I'm gonna get something different. This is better, these are some real logs <laughs> or bats. So I will open these up. When you spin with a handheld distaff, the type of spinning that you're doing is a little bit more like a woolen yarn. You are drafting the twist against the fiber rather than a short draft or a worsted type of spinning. And so it's really necessary to have your fiber on the handheld distaff very, very loose and open and fluffy so that it drafts easily from the fiber supply with Without you having to pinch and hold on to both ends of the fiber like you would for a worsted prep. So I fluffed everything up and this is a much better preparation. This fluffed up bat is much better than that, um, that roving that I had from the Shetland. I'll use that Shetland in a different project. So I'm just uh, lacing the ribbon around and around to hold the fiber onto the distaff and we are just about ready to spin. I'll tie a little bow and we'll be set. Let's start with one of the smaller ones. Ah, oh, look at that. It fits, it's perfect. <laughs> How cool. Okay, well now I just, I just wanna see if the other ones fit. Oh my goodness. That's great. It's a good weight too. That one works too. Um, yeah, so let's try some of the bigger ones on the bigger stick. You know what? These are all working. I'm very excited about this. That one looks like a chocolate donut. <laughs> uh, I made a little square one because it's kind of a cube because I thought why not? Don't see a lot in that shape so let's try it out going to I'm going to start it as a supported spin just to get the thread going there we go now we're spinning all right now I can wrap it on there 
<laughs> now I feel like the table's in the way. <laughs> Cool. This is great. It's working really well. It's not too heavy, but it's giving me the momentum, the twist that I want to have. Um, I do feel like the table's in my way. <laughs> this isn't support it's been. <laughs> uh, Actually, I like it better than I thought I would. I'm kind of used to spinning with those lead-free pewter whirls, and they're pretty heavy. Um, this one's a little bit lighter, and I feel like it's easier to get my thread just a bit thinner with this the, with this whirl. So that's very cool. probably going behind the table and you can't even see <laughs> what I'm doing here. So there's the thread I've made. It's nice. So I realized I'm kind of making a temporary cob on the spindle and that's what I do when I do a supported spin, but not really what I do when I use a handheld diff distaff. <laughs> I have to move all my yarn down onto the spindle where it belongs. But I'm really happy with this experiment. I'm looking forward to spending some actual time spinning with each of these different spindles, the sizes, the shapes, the different whirls. Haha, -ha, it's me, Future Evie. I'm editing this now and I'm ready to tell you that this little whirl, it's a very basic shape and I put smile faces around the top of it, is my favorite one for spinning so far out of all of them. It's the best. I love the shape. I love the balance. I love the weight. And here is all the yarn I have spun with it. Check out this massive cob that I have spun up using this spindle. I'm getting some great practice in and figuring out that the more yarn I get on the stick, the easier it is to spin with. I love these spindle whirls. This was 100% success. If you want to see some more up close pictures of the whirls I made and also of my spinning and this yarn, go over to my Instagram. That's where you can see uh, more detailed pictures of that. If you're enjoying my content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed and consider leaving a tip on my Kofi. I have links in the description below for the materials that I used for this video as well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, happy spinning.